After a so-called sighting of missing autistic boy Sebastian Rogers at a Blue Ridge Mountains rest stop, Sebastian's dad, Seth, tells us it's him. When I saw the picture, I turned around and loaded up the vehicle and off to North Carolina on a whim. My son's alive. Then he, I mean, he, he looks good in the picture. I mean... He's got clothes on, he's got shoes on. In today's video, we're diving into the recent sighting of Sebastian Rogers that took place a few months back. Now, before we get started, I want to say that I completely understand and appreciate that many of you have strong feelings about this case, whether you're supportive of Seth or the Proudfoots. Your passion and dedication to finding out the truth are what keep the conversation alive, and that's so important. That said, today's video is going to explore all the different angles surrounding the sighting so we can better understand the situation. My goal is to look at the facts, consider various perspectives, and encourage a healthy discussion. I'm not here to push one side over the other but to explore the possibilities together with you all. However, if you have strong opinions about either side, this video might not be for you. So let's jump in and take a closer look at what happened, keeping an open mind as we navigate through this complex case. Your thoughts and opinions are always welcome, and I hope we can work through this together to get closer to the truth. First off, it has been confirmed that this sighting was not Sebastian Rogers. However, Seth Rogers, Sebastian's father, felt very strongly that it was his son. As we saw in the clip from the Nancy Grace show, Seth was so convinced that he drove six hours to try to find Sebastian. Now, let's dig into this situation, keeping in mind that when it comes to Sebastian's parents, it's difficult to separate truth from fiction, or even identify where the truth has been twisted. So, I'm going to use words like allegedly or apparently quite a bit in today's discussion. Allegedly, when Seth saw the photo of the supposed sighting, he had a conversation with Chris Proudfoot, and Chris told him that it wasn't Sebastian. But here's where things get murky, we don't know how that conversation went down, or even if it happened at all. And if it did, we don't know the tone Chris used when he said it wasn't Sebastian. Did he say it with a firm, confident voice, convinced beyond a doubt? Or did he sound uncertain, like he was just guessing? The way Chris might have said those words and how Seth interpreted them could make a huge difference. For instance, if Chris confidently told Seth that the sighting wasn't Sebastian, that raises some serious questions. Why would Chris be so sure about something like that? If the biological father, Seth, believed the sighting was his son, but Chris didn't, does Chris know something the rest of us don't? Or is it possible that Chris simply didn't think it was Sebastian without any deeper motives? Let's consider another possibility. Maybe Chris wasn't involved in Sebastian's disappearance at all, and his reaction was just a gut feeling. We've all had moments where we feel strongly about something, only to find out later that we were the only ones who saw it that way. Could this be a case of Chris just not seeing the resemblance in the photo? Or, on the darker side, did Chris confidently deny it was Sebastian because he knew, without a doubt, that it wasn't him, perhaps because he had some involvement in what happened to Sebastian? This is the kind of situation that really makes you wonder about the details. Another thing to think about is how law enforcement handled this situation. If Chris was so quick to say it wasn't Sebastian when everyone else thought it might be, why was that? Was he simply confident, or did he have inside knowledge? It's crucial to note that we don't know whether law enforcement spoke to Chris before Seth did or what was said if they did. It would have been very telling if law enforcement had shown up with body cams and presented the photo to Chris and Katie, capturing their initial reactions. Even if Chris and Katie had already seen the social media posts about the sighting, it would have been beneficial for law enforcement to sit down with them and gauge their responses. If Seth was convinced it was Sebastian but the Proudfoots were not, that difference in opinion could be valuable information for the investigation. But let's flip the coin for a moment. If Chris and Katie had anything to do with Sebastian's disappearance, wouldn't this have been the perfect opportunity for them to shift suspicion away from themselves? They could have easily agreed with Seth, saying they believed the sighting was Sebastian too, using it to gain public trust and reduce the suspicion surrounding them. They could have made a public statement expressing their excitement about the sighting and their hope to bring Sebastian home. If they had done that, it might have changed public perception. People who were pointing fingers at them might have backed off. 
but they didn't do that. Instead, Chris's quick dismissal of the sighting only made people more suspicious. It led many to wonder, if Chris was so certain it wasn't Sebastian, what does he know that the rest of us don't? On the other hand, someone who thinks they can get away with harming a child might believe they don't need to divert attention away from themselves. They might be so confident and arrogant that they feel no need to use a sighting to sway public opinion. This is a critical point to consider because it speaks to the mindset of someone who might be involved in something sinister. But even if that's not the case, the fact remains that this sighting was a significant moment in the investigation, one that stood out to many people. It's heartbreaking that it turned out not to be Sebastian and that Seth's hopes were crushed. It's also troubling that Chris didn't think it was him, assuming that conversation happened and that Chris was indeed confident in his assessment. One more angle to consider is the impact of social media and public opinion on this case. The sighting was shared online, and it created a wave of hope and speculation. But in the end, it didn't lead to Sebastian. This kind of public scrutiny can be a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it keeps the case in the public eye and puts pressure on law enforcement to continue searching. On the other hand, it can also spread false hope or misinformation, which can be incredibly damaging to the families involved. For Seth, believing that the sighting was his son must have been a roller coaster of emotions. The crushing disappointment of finding out it wasn't Sebastian would have been hard to bear. But what about the Proudfoots? If they're innocent, as they claim, then the public suspicion and accusations must be incredibly frustrating and painful. Imagine being in their shoes, constantly under the microscope, with every action and word being analyzed for hidden meaning. It's a situation that no one would want to be in, guilty or innocent. So, where does this leave us? Unfortunately, we're still in the dark when it comes to what really happened to Sebastian Rogers. The sighting that gave so much hope turned out to be nothing more than a false alarm. Seth is back to square one, desperately searching for his son, while the Proudfoots remain under a cloud of suspicion. And we, the public, are left to wonder and speculate, trying to piece together the truth from the limited information we have. This brings us to the end of today's video. Take care and stay safe.